Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And the Cataclysm Classic has finally got an official release date, with the pre-patch and launch happening much earlier than any of us was expecting. Cataclysm pre-patch is launching on April 30th, with the pre-patch going to be a bit more condensed than the original version of Kata, and it's going to kick off strong with playable Goblin and Worgen, a ton of class changes, the entire Shattered World revamp, transmog and gear stat changes. Cataclysm proper launch is on May 20th, with 7 new zones, 9 dungeons, 3 raids, a new PvP zone of Tal Barad, holiday updates and Azeroth flying. But such an early launch means that players have a limited time left to do the last minute prep work. So in this video I'm gonna go over the 7 things you should start doing right now if you plan on playing or checking out Kata Classic and wanna have a strong early start into the new WoW Classic experience. But right before that, most of you guys watching these kind of update videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight Patch 1026, 1027, Season 4, or any of the future War Within updates. Off the bat, I want to start off with the most recommended thing on anyone's list is to simply level any classes that you're interested in to play in Cataclysm Classic. As every second class in the game is going to go through a number of changes going from Wrath to Kata, with classes such as Hunters and Paladins getting some of the more noticeable changes such as an entirely new resource system. And many of our favorite classes are getting access to some of the most recognizable class abilities from the retail versions of WoW, such as Rogues and Smoke Bomb, which is incredibly good for PvP or mages getting access to flame orb as well as time warp, druids get stampeding roar, warriors get their heroic leap, and priests get their leap of faith. Leveling a character before Cataclysm also allows you to benefit from an XP buff that is active in Wrath Classic, which provides you with 50% additional experience gains, making leveling that much quicker. Another advantage of leveling a character right now instead of after Cataclysm pre-patch is all of the old zones are still as they are and haven't been converted with the Cataclysm world revamp. So if you much rather prefer the old version of Azeroth rather than the Cataclysm revamp version, then right now is the best time to level through all of those old quest lines. However, leveling after Cataclysm pre-patch is another option, as Cataclysm does expand on a ton more race class combinations, creating a ton of new playable options, with things like Human Hunters, Night Elf Mages, Shaman Dwarves for the Alliance, as well as the Torrin Paladins, Troll Warlocks and Blood Elf Warriors for the Horde. In Cataclysm you also get two new race options in the pre-patch, starting with the Worgen for the Alliance who have access to the classes like Death Knights, Druids, Hunters, Mages, Priests, Rogues, Warlocks and Warriors, as well as the Goblins for the Horde who can be played as Warriors, Warlocks, Shamans, Rogues, Priests, Mages, Hunters and Death Knights. So if you are more interested in leveling those type of new race class combinations for the pre-patch, then you can still do some preparation ahead of time to make sure that those characters can get a strong head start once Cataclysm pre-patch launches. And the best way to do that is to start saving up for heirloom gear ahead of time so that you can level these characters as quickly as possible once the pre-patch is finally upon us. Another thing you should do before Cataclysm is to get all of your professions done ahead of time. With Cataclysm, professions will be a huge boon when it comes to endgame content, whether you're looking to make a lot of gold early on with things like herbalism, mining and alchemy, or looking for some of the more endgame progression to get ahead of the competition with things like engineering within PvP content. Getting your profession skill ups right now in Wrath will allow you to then focus on Kata professions once the new expansion launches. This is also especially useful since a lot of the relevant items for professions can currently be found pretty easily on the auction house. But once Cataclysm properly launches on May the 20th, a lot more players will start focusing on the new tier of gathering materials, which are going to be more expensive, therefore more lucrative and therefore definitely worth chasing after, which could make some of the Wrath crafting materials a little bit more expensive since there will be less players farming them, with more players focusing on the Cataclysm items trying to make a little bit of gold since they will be so high in demand. Also, right now it's probably your best chance to get some of the more rare mounts before they completely gone with the Cataclysm launch, as we transition from one era of World of Warcraft into another, certain unique items and rewards from Wrath of the Lich King will be going away once Cataclysm fully launches. 
certain mounts such as the Swift Zillion Tiger and the Swift Razashi Raptor will become actually unobtainable with Cataclysm because of the changes coming to the instance of Zul Grub. As for some of the other mount rewards, such as the Invincible or Mimran's Head, which are obtainable from the raids of Wrath of Lich King, will still be around, but will be made a little bit harder to get post-Wrath. In fact, a lot of the rewards from Wrath are going to be on a chance drop basis, instead of being a little bit more available than they are right now. So if you want to get those mounts knocked off off of your collecting list ahead of time, now might be a pretty good time to do it before the Catapree patch officially drops. Classic Cataclysm is going to be a feature filled expansion with a brand new zone just for PvPers called Tol Barad, a bunch of new dungeons, brand new zones, lots of class changes, updates to holidays, as well as a better way to itemize your character with reforging. But out of all of those features, none can compete with the best one of them all transmogging. I'm gonna assume that most of you are pretty familiar with what transmogs are, but if you aren't, it is a system which allows you to modify an item's appearance, where you get to choose the item's visual. The transmog system is going to be very similar to the one in retail WoW, where items that you obtain are added to your collections permanently, instead of you having to hold the item you want the looks of in order to do your transmogging appropriately which allows you to change the appearance of any items that you're currently wearing into any of the item in your collection. Though, like the retail version, some limitations do apply. For example, you can't have a shaman wearing the items of that of a priest, because shamans wear male gear, therefore they will be able to transmog male items onto their equipable male gear. Even with those limitations, however, it does open up players with quite a bit of creativity when it comes to fully customizing the inner works of their character. And you can start collecting transmog items right now in Wrath while awaiting Cataclysm pre-patch. And store all items that you're interested in adding to your collection in your bank for the time being. Once Cataclysm officially launches, those items will be added to your collections, which is then when you can toss them off to the side in order to create some extra space in order to prep yourself for Cataclysm leveling. Number 6 on the list will be to finish out your classic Plunderstorm rewards before they are gone. If you have yet to check out the Plunderstorm event, it is a new game mode that is currently available to all players with a WoW subscription. This includes retail players, but also classic players alike. Plunderstorm is WoW's take at a battle royale experience. You drop in, slay elites, loot plunder, spells and abilities, and survive as long as you can until you are the king of the hill. As you play matches of Plunderstorm, you'll earn plunder, which gets converted into renown with the Plunderstorm faction. Basically, it's kind of like a rep grind of sorts, but one that awards you with cosmetics, pets, and even mounts as you advance your way through its ranks. While a good portion of Plunderstorm items are retail and Dragonflight exclusive, some of the more sought after items are available in Classic WoW as well. And if you've done majority of the prep work ahead of Cataclysm, you can then start working on Plunderstorm rewards right now before they are gone, as Plunderstorm is a limited time event that will eventually be retiring after some time though no end date has been given out just yet. Lastly, at the very bare minimum, you should at least save up enough gold in order to be able to buy flying once Cataclysm launches. Cataclysm is the very third expansion of World of Warcraft, which helps expand your flying capabilities by adding flying into the revamped Azeroth zones. I don't even need to explain you why flying around Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms is a massive upgrade to the normal riding skill. Not only will you move around so much faster out in the open world, but it's also much more convenient getting around from zone to zone. And it's not like this grind is really that bad either, as the amount of gold you need to unlock the very bare bones version of flying isn't a lot. Just be sure to save up some gold now ahead of Cataclysm before launch. Of course, if you want to grind out a bunch of gold ahead of Cataclysm, you definitely should do so if you have that availability. Gold is going to end up being a useful currency all throughout the expansion, whether you're looking out to buy raiding supplies, upgrade all of your spells and abilities, retrain your character's talents for endgame after you completed the entire leveling journey, or if you're looking to simply speedrun professions. But for now, this is going to be my entire list of some of the things you should start working on right now ahead of Cataclysm Classic. Super excited for this expansion since I myself am a Cata baby. This is the expansion that I started playing my druid on. Back when there was a character named Erezus on the server Scarlet Crusade. We had a small little community on that server, but it was such a memorable time. Cataclysm was definitely not a perfect experience, but it is one that I still have a soft spot for. And I hope that this expansion will see a ton of changes to make it a much better experience than the original version. 
as per usual if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative go ahead and give it a thumbs up i would very much appreciate it and as always in the description of every single video and live stream we have a link to our discord community channel probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.